Good evening. Happy Monday. Can you hear me, guys? Good evening, Miss. Hi, how are you? How are you, Emerson? How was the weekend? Very relaxed. Nice. Did you go out? Yes. I'm going to beach on Sunday. Ooh, was, it, was it raining? Um, no. This is a uh, day is <laughs> um, closing, but don't rain. Oh, ay, that's nice. Good day to go out to the beach without so much sun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'm ha happy to hear that you were relaxing. Hi, Mauricio. Hi, Jose. How are you? Hi. Hi. Hi, teacher. How are you? Doing great. How was I am recovering from the week. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> recovering from Monday. How are you? How was your weekend? Uh, very good. Did you go out? Did you go anywhere? Yes, at the beach. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Two people already at the beach. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Mayra. How are you? Hi, Jose. Hi, Hi Miss. How are you, Jose? How was your weekend? Uh, a little far. My weekend start on Friday because the last Friday from August is a free day for the workers where I in my company. Yes. Oh, <laughs> that's yeah, it's a holiday. That's nice. I'm. I think I will have the day off next Monday because next Monday is Labor Day in the United States, and I don't have the vacation from El Salvador. <laughs> so that sucks. But I had the one from the US, so that, that's good. Hopefully, I will have <laughs> have on Monday. At least okay. in the day, during the day. <laughs> Hi, Maida. How are you? Hi, Carlos. Hi. Good evening. Oh, you're in the just you in the car, Maida. <laughs> yes, I'm going to my house right now. All right, perfect. Hi, Abigail. How are you? Hi, Juan Carlos. Um, Hi, Abigail. How are you? Um, I'm excited. All right. <laughs> what about the weekend? Did, what did you do on the weekend, Abigail? Mm, I went to play soccer. Oh, wow. That's really cool. <laughs> yes, but I, we lost. Oh, the game. <laughs> but on the positive side, you did exercise. <laughs> All right. So that's nice. So, guys, tonight we're going to start the class with a random question. Okay. We have, we have a random question. Random questions are the ones in which you can use any answer that comes to your mind, right? I'm going to send it in the chat. in the chat. This is the random question for tonight. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? Okay. These are called random questions. Don't die on the And you're supposed to be able to answer it with as much conversation as possible. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? Okay. So <laughs> I'm going to give you guys a few minutes. I'm going to give you two minutes. So you can think about your answer or you can write your answer as you prefer. And then in two minutes, no, yeah, in three minutes at 8.10, I want to hear your answers one by one, your answers to that question. Okay. So you have three minutes right now to write your answer. If you could wish, if you had one wish, what would you wish for? Of course, of course, explain why, right? For example, I would wish for world peace uh yeah really why would you wish for world peace right <laughs> explain okay you have three minutes this is individual please answer the question that you have in the chat teacher confirm the the question is if you have one wish what mm -hmm. would you do what would you wish for okay if you had one wish what would you wish for okay thank you and then explain why would you wish that, okay? 
You have two minutes, guys. This is individual. Okay, guys, if you have your answers ready, raise your hand and then we're going to hear your answers. I want to hear one by one, each one of you. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? Okay, I think I'm going to start because I'll be the mm. first, then we start listening to your answers. Okay, if I had one wish, only one wish, I and I think I would wish for um longevity, like. I would I would wish to be able to live for a long time, obviously healthy, right? <laughs> so that way I would never run out of time to do anything. I would do all the things I want whenever I want. And I wouldn't worry that, oh, I don't have enough time to do this, right? 
So I would I would wish for longevity and health. What about you guys? I want to hear your answer. Mauricio, what would you wish for if you had one wish? Okay, teacher. Uh, if you have one wish, what would it be? Uh, I would ask for wisdom. Okay, why? Because uh, I reserve and uh, cualquier anything anything problem oh any problem okay yeah all right that's nice okay to solve the ability to solve problems by using wisdom okay mm -hmm. let me hear the others i want to hear your answer if you could only have one wish what would you wish for Let's see the others. Raise your hand if you have your answer to it then, folks. You should have Good evening, teacher. That. Hi, Wendy. Do you have the answer to your to the question, Wendy? Okay, we are answering the question that in the chat. If you had one wish, what would you wish for and why, right? Um, for example, Mauricio just told us, I would wish, he said, I would wish for wisdom because I would be able to solve any problem, right? He would know what to do. <laughs> what about the others? I want to hear your answer. If you had one wish, what would you wish for, Wendy? Let's see who else has the answer ready. Let's see, Abigail. Abigail, what if you had one wish, what would you wish for? And why? Mm, I like, I never go. Oh, to never age. Uh -huh, age. Uh -huh, and he said, to never age. That's a good one. Why, Abigail? Mm -hmm. Because I'm scared about that. <laughs> that. It's true, I am too. <laughs> totally good. Good option, Abigail. <laughs> good answer. Thank you. Okay, let me hear. Um, let's see here. Eduardo. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? <clears throat> okay, in my case, I was thinking the same thing that Abigail, that Abigail said. Mm -hmm. uh, because I would like to get in the same age. I would like to be more older than now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> older than now, sorry. And <clears throat> yes, and I would like to. Okay, to it's that. not because you're afraid, because you just don't want to get old. <laughs> And new okay. the, the new generation or something like that. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's a good it's a good reason. <laughs> Thanks for sharing, guys. Okay, we're gonna listen to Emerson. Emerson, if you had one wish, what would you wish for and why? Mm, well, I become two kids again. Okay. Why? Because the because he was funny to play pranks. Yeah, also life is easier when you're younger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you don't understand anything, but it's easier. <laughs> that way. It's very fun. That is very mm -hmm. fun. It's true. Good job. Thanks for answering, Emerson. Okay, let's listen to okay. um Jorge. Jorge Antonio. If you had one wish, what would you wish for? 
Sorry, teacher, but I uh, connect a few minutes. I don't. Oh, uh, okay. Don't worry. Uh, We're just answering that question in the, from the chat. If you had one wish, what would you wish for and why? Okay. Uh, Juan Carlos, please. Do you have your answer? Uh, yes. In my case, I wish I could travel around the world uh, in different means. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in planes or aircraft, or I don't know mm -hmm. the correct name, and train and to lose cruise uh -huh. uh, uh, ships. Yeah. Cruise, cruise ships. ships. Cruise, cruise ships. ships. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, but um, do it with my family. Mm -hmm. No different cultures or different countries, uh, Nordic country, for example, for, for example, mm -hmm. uh, uh, Europe, uh, Asia, etc. All right, that's a really good answer. Juan Carlos, thank you for sharing. Okay, <laughs> let's see. What about Carla? Carla, if you had Hello. one wish, what would you wish for and why? Uh, yes. I wish to have a lot of money. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, but I think my real wish is to have no fears. Oh, that's a good one. Why? <laughs> Why would you wish that? Uh, because uh, if I have no fears, I could do a lot, a lot of things. <laughs> mm -hmm. They wouldn't stop you from anything. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's a good answer. Thank you. Okay, let's see. Wendy, do you have your answer ready? Thank you for sharing, Carla. Wendy, do you have your answer? Or what about you, Carlos Vladimir? Do you have your answer ready? Yes, Jenna. Mm -hmm. I would like to have a time machine. Wow, okay. Yes, to visit the different time of the past and very, very, verify, how do you say verify? Verify. Verify. Them. verify. Yes. Yeah, that's a good one. To know the chismecito. <laughs> very good, Vladimir, thank you. Jose Bernardo, do you have the answer, your answer? Do you have your answer to the question, Jose? Or Jose Romero also? <laughs> okay, teacher, if I had one, if I had one wish, I would use it for travel to the past, maybe 2015. 2015. Yeah. Okay. High school. Oh. <laughs> mm -hmm. This is very, very specific. Nice. <laughs> yes. Okay. All right. So then we have the other one that I'm going to put here, guys. You're going to be answering. I'm going to write it here in the chat. I'm going to send it in the chat. And this is, this is similar to the answer that Jose just gave. Okay. But you're going to have to change it. <laughs> That's the question you have to answer right now. If you could relive any moment in your life, which moment would it be? And why? If you could relive any moment in your life, which moment would you relive and why? Okay. Which moment would it be? Oh, that's a tough one. I think if I had to relive one moment, probably, I think I would relive the first day when I got a dog because it was my first pet ever. and. I was I was already an a, a kind of an adult, young adult. <laughs> I was like seventeen years old. No, I was a teenager. <laughs> so I was seventeen years old, and my friend has give, gifted me my first pet. She gifted me a, a little puppy, and it was the prettiest puppy I had ever seen. So she and she has been my only pet. I, my pet dog, right now I have a bunny, but then if I could relive a moment. 
in my life, I would relive that day, the first day that I saw my pet. Because it made me so happy. Because for 17 years, my parents never let me have pets. <laughs> so that's why I will relive that moment. What about you guys? Which moment? Write it down. Write down the answer to your question. If you could really relive any moment in your life, which moment would it be? And explain why you would like to live that moment again. Okay? I'm going to give you guys five minutes. Um, Jonathan, please. Okay, uh, no, but uh, in my case, about uh, the the question that you said, mm -hmm. I would like to to uh, really? I had to relieve. I would like to relieve the moment when I was a child when my father uh, gave me my my first bicycle, and I remember in in that moment, I felt I felt. Uh, very happy and I couldn't uh, ride bicycle but I learned and I remember I woke up uh, very early every day and I start to 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 learn to to ride bicycle <laughs> and that moment yes is uh, very happy that's why I like to relieve the in that moment very good that's exactly the type of answer we're looking for thanks for sharing Jonathan right we wanna we wanna hear your your answers with complete details, right? Which moment would you choose to relive, and why would you choose to relive it? Okay, I'm gonna give you guys. It's eight twenty four, so I'm gonna give you guys three three to five minutes, depending. Okay, three to five minutes. So we'll check in at eight thirty. Okay, you have five minutes and a half to write your answer. Think about it, explain what would it be and why would it be, okay? You have five minutes. If this is individual again, if you could relive any moment in your life, which moment would it be and why?
Okay, let me hear your answers. Let's begin. If you could relive any moment in your life, which moment would it be and why? Okay. Um, before we start answering, answer the question. I'm going to take attendance. So please be ready to say your name, okay? Um, Carlos Vladimir Rodriguez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Thank you. Daira Jonathan Puente. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. <clears throat> Here. Thank you. Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present, miss. Thank you. Jonathan Jose Gonzalez. Present, miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sanchez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo Lopez. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present, miss. Thank you. Jose Cesar Lemos. Juan Carlos Herrera. Present, miss. Thank you. Juan Jose Herrera. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you. Kenny Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you. Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Present. Thank you. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Present. Thank you. And Wendy Maristela Ramírez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Okay, so let's answer the question. Let me see if we have volunteers to answer. Okay. If you could relive any moment in your life, which moment wouldn't be and why? Um, would you like to start, Mauricio, answering the question? Yes, teacher. Okay. Uh, the question is, if you could relive any moment in your life, which moment would, would it be and why? Mm -hmm. uh, my moment is special. I want to relive it when we shared with my mother. Okay. May, may she rest in peace. Okay. Because... because uh, we enjoy life mm -hmm. together. And Very good. Mm -hmm. we were happy. Perfect. Very good answer, Mauricio. Thank you. Very detailed and exactly the information and the reason why. Very good. Thank you. Uh, let's see. Juan Carlos, do you have your answer ready? Yes. Uh, in my case, uh, he's similar to Mauricio. Uh, mm -hmm. I would like to be uh, to be relief when I when I was um, eighteen uh, eighteen years mm -hmm. um, when I uh, my father's when my parents uh, was with me. Okay. Uh, uh, maybe. Um, How do you say, haber tenido? To have had. To have had more, uh, more, uh, more care, uh, care uh, about the health. The, the, okay. The health. Mm -hmm. Because my, my mother uh, passed away uh, for cancer and my father had a task. All right. Sorry to hear that, but very good answer. Thanks, Juan Carlos. Okay, um, let's see, Abigail, Abigail Bonilla, if you could relive any moment in your life, which moment would it be and why? Mm, I would like to relive my 15 years party. Oh, <laughs> why? Mm, because my mom celebrate okay it was a good great party then <laughs> yes Perfect. i yes, buy uh, i uh -huh. bought uh -huh. the um, pink dress 
<laughs> oh, that's really pretty. <laughs> nice. Mm. Thanks for sharing, Abigail. Okay, let's see. What about Vladimir? Do you have your answer ready? Do you have your answer ready, Vladimir? Yes, sorry. Uh -huh. uh, the moment of my life to relive uh, will be a day of the high school graduation because mm -hmm. the because the enjoy that my mother had uh, this moment I have never seen again. Ooh, she was so proud of you then. <laughs> Very good. Great answer. Thanks, Vladimir. Uh, let's hear Eduardo, please. <clears throat> okay, there are uh, a bunch of moments I would like to relate, but uh, actually um, I didn't feel really happy and it was the most exciting moment that I had in my life when I received the notice that I will get a niece. The, okay. the sisters daughters. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was studying at the university, but <clears throat> I didn't remember. But because the 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 day was different, because my sister told me uh, she will get the my niece in in, in December. Mm -hmm. No, in in February, but she got the my niece in January. She gave birth in January. <laughs> yes. Okay. So wow, that was early. <laughs> I was really uh, uh, happy for that because I would like to to be I would like to to be in the in that moment with her, but I only didn't see the the noticing after I will um <laughs> no <laughs> All right, very good. Thanks for sharing a lot of it. Okay, let's hear Emerson, please. Well, uh... The moment I, I wanted to relate is about uh, 12 years ago mm -hmm. when we made a bicycle trip with my wife, traveled the Liberal Road to get a resort at the Tersoro Beach in a, in a, pla in a, in a pass. Okay. That's this really was cool. a tidy trip, but very energizing at the same time. <laughs> Nice. Thanks for sharing, Emerson. Very good. Okay. Now let's hear um Jorge. Jorge, are you ready now? Yes, teacher. Okay. Which moment would you like to relieve and why? Mm, well, if I had that opportunity opportunity to relieve a moment. It could be when when I was in in high school, mm -hmm. because um I I had the opportunity to play uh, basketball. I I like a lot, and in this moment, um, I have the opportunity to play the. Um, I remember that um, in a one year when I was seventy years, um, we played the regional championship in mm -hmm. Sonsonate with the mm -hmm. uh, school, um, the San Francisco de Assis College. Uh, I remember and. Uh, we was the opportunity to travel to play in Guatemala, in Guatemala mm -hmm. uh, too. And well, I think um, this moment I enjoy it uh, because uh, it's my my favorite is my favorite sports and and for me these years uh, was. Uh, very good. All right. 
Thanks for sharing. A very complete answer. Thank you. Okay. Now we're going to see. Am I missing anyone? Jose, please. Okay, Miss, if you could relive any moment in your life, which moment it would be? In my case, at a specific moment when my sister, when my sister birth 18 years. And why? Because I remember it was a big night. We started to play in challenge or true or true or challenge uh -huh. already 9 p.m. And we end up already 4 a.m. for the next day. It was uh, a big night. It oh. was a really big night with, <laughs> with our friends and our family. Already That's really nice. The <laughs> oh, you're not the bitch. That's even better. Yes. <laughs> yes. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like a good moment to relieve. <laughs> yeah, yes. now we are all. <laughs> so, what about Carla? Carla, do you have your answer ready? Thanks for hearing. Mm -hmm. Um, I want to relieve a moment, maybe when I bought my TV <laughs> with my first bag, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I felt felt like I uh, finally have something with my job. <laughs> no, it's independent. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Perfect. Very good, Carla. Thank you for sharing. Okay, guys, so tonight, if you have noticed, you have been speaking a lot because we have been continuously <laughs> practicing for the topic, which means should, would, and should. And we're going to relive, we're going to relive the grammar moment when we speak about should, would, and should. I'm not sure if you already saw this in the previous module, but if not, we're going to say it one more time here. Okay. I'm going to need one person to help me read. We have some some slides here. So volunteers for reading. We need two people for this one. For this slide, we need two volunteers to read. Jonathan, please. Okay. Jonathan, help us with the first part and the first two examples. And then Vladimir, help us with the other two examples and the final part. Don't worry, guys, we have more to read, so. Yeah, let's do the first one. Okay. Are cool and good the past tense? Okay, so first things first, cool is used as the past tense of can, and will is used as the past tense of will. For example, I can play the piano. I could play the piano when I was young. Thank you. Vladimir? I am sure we will be late to the party now. I was sure we will be late to the party past. Whenever we use can in the present to talk about inability on something that was generally possible, then we use could to take about the same thing in the past. Can you understand today's lesson? Be becomes could you understand yesterday lesson all right thank you so listen guys could would and should there are many different scenarios in which you can use them okay so the first scenario is using could as the past tense of can and using would as the past tense of will okay this is the first scenario where you can use them. For example, I can teach English right now, okay? I could speak English when I was 10 years old, right? I can teach it now, but I could speak it since I was 10, right? Good in the past. I had the ability to do it in the past when I was 10 years old, okay? And then would, right? The opposite in past would be in past, but for will, right? For example, and you have it right, uh, I will be late to the party, will be late to the party, simple future. And then I was sure I would be late to the party. Usually in this case, it's in the past, like it was going to happen, but it didn't happen, right? I was sure I would be late to the party, right? And then 
it says whenever we use can in present, we're expressing ability that we can do something, right? In general, it's possible. When we use it in past, we're saying the same thing, but in the past tense, okay? For example, um, I cannot drink. I cannot drink alcohol. Well, I cannot drink too much alcohol now that I'm 34. I cannot drink too much alcohol. I could drink a lot of alcohol when I was 20. <laughs> But when I was standing, I could drink a lot of alcohol and I was like new the next day. But today, not possible. I cannot do that anymore. <laughs> right? So you're expressing you're expressing ability to do something. Can for present, could for past. Right? Yo podía. I could. Right? That's the first scenario. It's not the only situation where you will do that. Hmm? Let's Check the next slide. We need one volunteer to read this the slide. Me teacher. Go ahead, please, Maurice. Okay. Reporter teach using could and would as past tense. This is similar to how we use could and would in reporter teach. Reporter teach is Fancy name for repeating what some else said. When we report what someone else do us, we move out of the verb back from tense in, in, into the past. So if your friend, your say, can you and Henry Come and help me move some boxes tomorrow. When you share this information with Henry, you say, George, ask him if we could come to help him tomorrow. Can become cool in a reported page. Just like we become wood. Here, Another example, Lily will you join you join us at the part after work after work. Lily after is the if we will join them then at the bar after work. All right, so guys. Nice. The first scenario I told you using would as the past tense of will and could as the past tense of can. The other scenario where you will see these auxiliaries would and could is when you're doing reported speech. I'm not sure if you already saw reported speech in the previous models, but if not, I'm going to tell you what it is right now. Okay. Reported speech is literally when you report what other person said. But when you do reported speech, you have to do it one ten previous to the one in which the person spoke. For example, if the person speaks in present, you report in past. If the person speaks in past, you would be reporting in past perfect. Okay? Cada vez para hacer reported speech, se va a reportar o se va a narrar lo que la otra persona dice un tiempo gramatical atrás de donde habla la persona. All right? In this case, tenemos el ejemplo en presente. Esta persona está hablando en presente. Jorge says, Can you and Henry come and help me move some boxes tomorrow? Y yo voy a report it. Jorge asks, If we could, ok, él habla en presente, lo voy a reportar en pasado. Jorge asks, If we could, Come to help him tomorrow. Okay. In the reported speech, you go one tenth behind. Okay. And if it's in present, in future, you go and using wood. Right. Will you join us at the bar afterward? Voy a reportarlo. Lily asks if we would join them at the bar afterward. Right. So that's another scenario where you can just put and wood. And for this one, I'm going to ask you to try to make an example. All right? 
Try to make an example. Make one sentence in present and then report it in past using could or would. Okay. This is going to be individual. Try to make one sentence. Make it in present. Report it using reported speech. Report it in past using could or would. So it has to be with can or will in present, right? And future. For example, let's do an exercise. Carla, tell me one sentence, anything in present. Um, I eat cake. Okay. Okay. okay, pay attention. Carla dijo en presente, I eat cake. Yo lo voy a reportar. Lo voy a narrar using reported speech. Y la regla dice que lo tengo que reportar usando un tiempo gramatical atrás. Si ella habla en presente, yo lo reporto en pasado. Right? Carla dijo, I eat cake. So I'm going to report it saying, Carla said that she ate cake. Okay. Carla said that she ate cake. Okay. Ahora, si Carla ocupa una, para una oración con can, si me dice, por ejemplo, I can eat two cakes in one day. Yo mm -hmm. voy a reportar, Carla said that she could eat two cakes in a day, right? So that those are other scenarios where you can do that, okay? Now, the next scenario where we use could and would, okay? Um, we need two volunteers. First person will read this part, and the second person the examples, and the last part. And two volunteers for this one. You're just going to read. Jorge, please help us with the first section until here, until the past. And we need one more volunteer to read examples, please. Eduardo, please read the examples and the last one. Go ahead. Okay, could and would for possibility versus imaginary or hypothetical situation. The next big difference between the modal verbs could and would is to talk about situations that are possible versus situations that are imaginary or hypothetical. Could is used to talk about things that are possible in the present, like we could go to the movies tonight. This means that something is possible. It's an option we use the negative from kun to show the opposite, that something is either impossible or didn't happen in the past. <clears throat> okay. Let Let's look at some examples. The weather is beautiful today. We could go to the park. And also we could try the new tea, tea place for dinner tonight. This sentence both sound like suggestions. We use coolly the same way to talk about things that are possible, but that we aren't completely certain. Oh, for example, it could rain later today. It's possible. They could be at home. I see their car in the driveway. Okay. So listen, I told you the first scenario what could it as the presence of Ken. Como cuando ustedes ocupan could, como el pasado de Ken, es podía. Okay. I could drink alcohol when I was younger. Yo podía beber alcohol cuando era. She could ride a car when she was five years old. Ella podía manejar cuando tenía cinco años, right? Etc. Podía. But in this scenario, when you are talking about imaginary possibility or hypothetical, could ya no es podía, es podría, right? Talking about probability, podría. Exact same word, different meaning, okay? Depending on the context, it's going to have different meanings, all right? So... It's telling you we use them to use about situations that are possible or situations that are imaginary or hypothetical, right? So if there is an option, 
we could go to the movies tonight. We could finish the class at 11, right? It is a possible, it is an option. It's not necessarily that it's going to happen, right? And couldn't for the opposite, right? No podría ser. We couldn't. For example, we couldn't be in class until 11 p.m. because we would be sleepy, right? So we couldn't be in class until 11 p.m., right? And then we have examples. The weather is beautiful today. We could go to the park. Even though they are, the sentence is in present, the option, the possibility is using could, right? Presente, el clima está hermoso hoy. Para usar este auxiliar como imaginario o hipotético o posibilidad, podríamos, bien, podríamos ir al parque, right? Like that. And could, it's also to express possibility. It could rain later tonight because we are in winter, right? It could rain. So those are the like the most common scenarios where you would use them. Now, if you are checking, what are the, let me check. And then should. This one is mostly for advice or suggestion, right? Should is mostly for advices or suggestions. And we need three volunteers to read this. We have space for three people. Person number one can read this section. Second person can read this section. And the last person can read. So we need three volunteers to read, please. Jonathan, please help us with the first part. Carla, help us with the second part. And we have a space for one more. One more volunteer to read the last part. Let's see, do we have one more volunteer to read? Okay, you read the last part, please. Go ahead, let's begin. Should for suggestion okay. or advice. Last but not least, let's talk about the modal verb should. Should doesn't have as many uses as could and would. We mainly use should to give a request and advice. Uh, for example, do you think I should start looking for a new job? You should really get a better car. They should start uh, taking the project more seriously. Carla? If you're not sure what to do, you can always ask a trust friend, uh, what, should, what should I do? Or what do you think I should do? And they prob probably replay using who? because for them is a real situation, uh, they are not you. If I were you, I would start looking for another job. Thank you. Marisa, we also use to to talk about things we regret doing in the past or, or things that we did in the past that we want to change or improve in the future, for example, we shouldn't have stayed up so late last night. I should have studied harder for the exam. All right. So, opposite to could and would that have different scenarios, different contexts where you can use them, right? For reported speech as the past tense of will and can. Also to make possibilities, express probability, right? Should, it's very limited, the use that you can have for them. But it's very common, okay? So, should doesn't have as many uses, right? The mainly is to give and request advice, mostly, okay? For example, do you think I, well, I have been coughing. <laughs> I've been coughing all night. And I'm like, still coughing. You are like, means I think you should go to the doctor, right? You're giving me advice. You should go to the doctor, miss, right? Or in this case, we have this one, right? If you have a lot of problems with your vehicle, 
you should really get a better cut, right? Or the other one. If you start taking the project more seriously, the project was supposed to be finished now, and it's not finished. They should start taking the project more serious, right? Suggestions or advice. And then, you see, you're going to use it, all of this, can, could, would, should. You can use them in affirmative sentences. You can use them in negative sentences. And obviously, to make yes or no questions or information questions, right? What should I do? What time should I be there? When should I be there? Right? You can use them with different context. Affirmative questions, uh, yes or no questions, sorry, information questions, right? For all those scenarios. And to give suggestions and advice, right? Which shouldn't have stayed up from last night. We shouldn't have gone to the movie theater at 11 p.m., right? We shouldn't have left the window open if it was raining. So you can use them in different scenarios, literally. But should is mostly to ask or to give suggestions or advice, not specifically, right? Okay, so here's what we're going to be doing right now. You're going to go into the breakout rooms and you are going to create a conversation in which you include, it's a free topic, okay? Not necessarily about business, not necessarily about work. It's a free topic. The scenario, the context, you can decide it. The only, the only thing is that you, everyone in the group has to participate. And the other is that you have to use all the auxiliaries. In the, it can be in any of the context that I just showed you, right? It can be to give advice, to suggest, to ask for advice. It can be for reported future. It can be as the past tense of would it, of willing thing, as you wish. So I'm going to give you guys 15 minutes to create a conversation. Make it a long conversation. You're going to have 15 minutes, and the only requirement is that you incorporate these auxiliaries, would, could, and should, all right? You can use them in questions, answers, affirmatives, or negative. That's as you wish. So the conversation has to last minimum three to four minutes. Okay, so don't come like, hi, how are you? What should we do today? Oh, we should go to the movies. Okay, bye. <laughs> That's not a conversation. That's way too basic. You are not basic anymore, right? So you're basically going to advance already. So try to make intermediate to advanced level conversation. Okay. The rooms are gonna be open right now. You're gonna have 15 minutes to create your conversation. Pueden ingresar a las salas. Tienen 15 minutos para crear su conversación. Es tema libre. Solo incorporen, asegúrense de incorporar los auxiliares que vimos ahorita. You'll have 15 minutes once you're in the rooms. Let's go in, let's go in. Vamos ingresando, por favor, a la sala.
Okay, so now that we're all back, so we're going to start listening. Man, quita la pepa. We're going to start listening to the conversation. We're going to begin with room number one. We have Eduardo Magaña and Jose Romero, please. Go ahead. Hi, Eduardo. Are you ready? Yes, my friend, are you ready? Okay. Hi, Eduardo. How's it going, man? I am doing great, my friend. I really, really feel uh, happy because I will get my vacations and the next week. What about you? I don't know if I have problem with my connection or Jose. I think it's okay because oh. his screen looks frozen. Let's do something. We're going to wait for him. We're going to go with the other rooms and we'll come back with you guys, okay? Okay. We're going to listen to room number three right now instead. Then we're going to listen to Jorge and Mauricio's conversation. Go ahead, please. George, um, ready? Yeah. Ready, George? Hello, hello, George. Hello. Okay. Okay, go. Hi. George, my friend, could you help me to select the color of the new car? Hello, Mauricio. Of course. Will be a red, black, or, or white or white car. What is your favorite color, man? I like red, but it could be white. Oh, it's a nice color, but when could you buy the new car and what model should you choose? The model is um, Maserati and I could buy it immediately. It's an amazing model. Could I go with you to buy it? I would like to. Come on, let's go. Okay, go. Only this. All right, very good. I like that you incorporated all the scenarios and you used them very good, right? So nice. Also, conversation was very fluent. Jorge Mauricio, thank you. Okay, we're going to listen to the conversation from room number four. We have Amazon and Juan Cari. Go ahead, guys, please. Okay, miss. Hey, Juan Carlos, how's it going? How was your weekend? Hello, Emerson. Um, very good, thanks. Well, on the weekend, I, I went to Chitoto to visit my grandparents. There was a, a family meet. Oh, really? So Chitoto is a, a beautiful place. I could visit it. For, for my next vacation, maybe. What place could you recommend me to see? Um, well, I, I recommend uh, that you go to the Suchitlan Lake. It is very nice, a uh, ferry, and you could go fishing. When I was young, uh, I will go fishing with my father. Yeah, I remember when the, I was a kid, I could fish there with my father too. Would okay. you like to go to the fishing next weekend? Uh, yes, yes, uh, sounds good. Uh, could I bring my old, my oldest son? Uh, I know uh, uh, he was late to go fishing. I like idea. You could meet meet me at the park and go from here for there. Okay, perfect. perfect. All right, very good, Emerson. Juan Carlos, very fluent conversation. Totally different scenario, but you incorporated the same auxiliaries, right? So very good. Now we're gonna listen to conversation from room number five. We have Abigail. Wendy and no, we have Jonathan and Wendy, right? 
No sé quiénes trabajaron en esta sala. Si me confirman. Wendy, ¿con quién trabaja usted? Sí, ya nadie me contestó. Ay, Wendy, no pidió ayuda. Como no, pero es que no pude, no sé, no pude entrar el teacher. Okay. Me sacó. Abigail, usted trabajó con alguien en la sala. Yo solo lo hice, teacher. Oh, all right. Pero no sé si va a estar bien. <risa> ok, mm. no, qué conversación y la hizo. No, porque tendría que estar alguien con. Eso, para estar. Ajá. Estar, ajá. Thank you, Wendy, for the effort. Ok. We're going to listen to room number six then. Uh, we have Carla, Sofia, and Mayra Pink. Go ahead, lady. Okay. Carla, you ready? Yes. Okay. Hi, Carla. Would you like to go to see to go see a movie at the cinema with me? Hi, Mira. Yes. Uh, we go see the movie Song of Freedom because the trailer is very interesting. Yes, we we should go to the five o'clock show. Sign, I go up at four o'clock. Oh, I agree. And I would like to eat something before the movie. <laughs> I think the price in the cinema are is very expensive. Uh, how, however, we we don't have enough time to eat quickly. <laughs> Yes, unless we should hide the food in our bags and eat inside the cinema. What do you think? It's, it's, it's a good idea, <laughs> but uh, maybe in the, into the backpack. <laughs> yes, could you buy the ticket? Yes, yes, <laughs> yes. Okay. To the 5 p.m. <laughs> yes, please. Okay. <laughs> nice job, <laughs> ladies. Thank you. <laughs> Listen, this reminds me. I went to the movies on Saturday. I had never been to... In Naples, they have the a VIP section. I had never been there. But I bought my entries, my tickets on Saturday. By mistake, I didn't know it was that... And I was like, why are these tickets so expensive? Like $10 for ticket. And I was like, well, maybe they raised the price, right? And I didn't know I was buying for the VIP. And then when I was in the VIP, I was like, what? what is this place? I'm never going back to normal movies. <laughs> so yeah, but yeah, I, I, what I should do is just get the food inside because for the price of that ticket. <laughs> Great idea, ladies. Good conversation. Um, let's see. Room number one, Eduardo. Do you know if Jose is back? Or yes, miss. Oh, there you are, Jose. <laughs> okay, we're gonna listen to room number one conversation. Okay, Eduardo, sorry, Jose. Eduardo. Okay. Hi, Eduardo. Hi, Eduardo. How's it going? I am doing great, my friend. Thanks for asking. What about you? Ah, we just having a great time. I heard that you were having vacation. Really... Yes, my friend. I have uh, told you before yesterday. I will get my vacations, uh, the next week. So I would like to really take advantage of those vacations. That uh, would you recommend me something, please? Yes, for sure. You should <clears throat> go to Roatan, man. <laughs> okay, it's a really great place. I had heard about that place, but I couldn't go because mm -hmm. I don't have enough money to to go to a town. Maybe I would like to to go a, a really great place, but near to me, please. Okay, in this case, you should go to Los Cobanos. Mm, maybe if, if you had vacation too, we can go together. I would like to go, but I don't have free time. However, I can request for a permission on my job. <clears throat> yes, my friend, absolutely. You need to get a vacation too. You might 
uh, may do a request for your boss and try to explain that you need a, a really great time with me and explain the time together and vacation. Okay. Would, you like to will... be, would you like to go with me? Yes, for sure. I would <clears throat> like to try my permission. Okay, miss. <clears throat> okay. I uh, I I suggest you that you should a uh, a recruit formal and I will the boss will understand and will give you the the, the permission. Okay, thanks okay. for the advice. <laughs> nice, okay. very nice. good. <laughs> well, worth the wait. <laughs> Thank you for recovering, guys, and delivering your conversation. Very nice. Okay, so listen, I'm gonna share with you right now. Some tips on how to create a checklist. In this case, it's going to be a checklist when you are trying to make a decision for your company, right? And I'm going to share this one with you. Okay. We are going to do some reading. Okay. We are going to read some reading. So I'm going to need one, two, three, four, and Five. We're gonna need five volunteers to read. Each person is going to read one paragraph like this. Okay. And remember, this is a topic we are reading. How can you create a decision-making checklist for your tasks? Okay. So volunteers, we need five volunteers to read. Raise your hand if you want to read. Maida, please help us with the introduction paragraph. And let's see who else wants to read. But here, help us with define your goal, please. Okay, we have another paragraph, volunteer. Identify your options. We need another volunteer. Emerson, please read, identify your options and evaluate your options. One more person. We need one more volunteer for this one. Um, Carla, you're going to help us with evaluate your options, please. And the last one, choose a not. This would be just this paragraph. Choose an act on your options. Who wants to be the last reader? The last person read. Do you think you could help us, Mauricio, with the last paragraph? Yes, teacher. Thank you. One paragraph. Okay. Mm, with the last one, yeah. Okay, let's begin with my help, please. There. How can you create a decision making checklist for your task? My help. Okay. Decision making is vital skill for any professional, especially especially when you have multiple tasks to prioritize, evaluate, and Execute. However, making good decisions can be challenged, especially when you face uncertain, complexity, or time pressure. That's why having a decision-making checklist can help you improve your analyt analytical skills and streamline your workflow. In this article, you will learn how to create a decision making checklist for your task using a simple four step process. Okay. Pronunciation here we have prioritize, prioritize, evaluate, evaluate, execute, execute, and then let's see. Which was the other one? I saw another one. No, I think it's just the yeah. Okay. Other than that, perfect. So guys, decision making, right? Oh, vital. Let's be vital. Vital is that vital. Okay. Vital. Okay. Hey, why? What did I do here? <laughs> one moment. Why is this happening? Bear with me, guys. I lost the screen. Just give me one moment. I'm going to zoom this out. It's just loading. Okay. 
Okay, so Mayra was reading the paragraph of the introduction, right? Which basically talks about the importance of making a decision. Whenever you have multiple options, how can you make a decision? You can try to make a checklist for your task, right? You can make a checklist with deciding on that. Let's read paragraph number one. Define your goal. The first step to creating a decision-making checklist is to define your goal, your goal clearly and specifically. What are you trying to achieve with your task? What are the criteria for success? How will you measure the outcome? By answering these questions, you'll have a clear direction and focus for your decision-making process. You'll also be able to eliminate irrelevant and distracting options and focus on the ones that align with your goal. Correct. Thank you. Uh, pronunciation here. Criteria. Instead of criteria, criteria. Okay. Other than that, you're good. So the first is that when you're making a checklist for your task, you have to define your goal. What do you want to do or what do you need to do, right? Do you need to make a decision? Do you need to finish a project? Do you need to start a project? What is it that you need, right? Define your goal. And that's why you're going to make the list. Let's go with paragraph number two. Identify your options. The next step of the identify your options for completing to your steps, depending on the nature and scoop your tasks, you may have a several or few options to show from. You can use various methods to, ge to generate and explore your options, such as a brainstorm, research, consulting orders, or using tools like decision trees or matrices. The key is to be create and open-minded but also realistic and practical. Do you not want to overwhelm yourself with too many options, but you also, also don't want to miss out on a potential opportunities? Thank you. All right. Pronunciation and different overwhelm. 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 Mm -hmm. Okay. okay. So the first point, the first point, define your goal. What do you need to get completed, or what do you need to decide? Number two, identify your option. Is this an option? Is this an option? How many do you have? Which ones? Depending on the nature of your task, right? And then, once you know one, two, three, four options are my possibility, or depending on how many you have, we go with the next paragraph. Evaluate your options. Uh, the third step is to evaluate your options based on your goal and uh, criteria. <laughs> you criteria. Can use criteria. You can use oh. different decision making models to help you compare and contrast your options, such as pros and cons. Um, is that is what analysis, a cost benefits analysis, or multi criteria. Mm -hmm. Criteria analysis. The aim, aim is the way the advantage or disadvantage of each option, as well as the risks and uncertainties. Uncertainties. <clears throat> uncertainties involved. Um, you should also consider the impact of your decision on yourself, your team, your organization, and your stakeholders. Stakeholders, correct. And then, so define your goal, define your options, and then evaluate your options, right? Everyone, everyone might have, might be an option or every option you have might have, might be a possibility but you have to evaluate them one by one. Okay, this one is good because of this and this. This other option, 
looks better than the first one, but it's more expensive, etc. Right? Evaluate your options. Don't go just for the first one. Okay. Let's go with the next step. Mauricio. Okay. 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 Choose an ad on your option. Mm -hmm. The final step is to choose an ad on your option. Once you have evaluated your option, you should have a clear idea of which or the best fit your goal and criteria. However, before you come in to your decision, you should also check your intuition and emotion. Do you feel confident and comfortable with your choice? Are there any doubt or bias? bias? Biasing, it may affect your judgment. 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 Mm -hmm. Is uh, if so? If so, you may want to re revisit your analysis or seek feedback from others. Once you are ready, you should act on your decision or follow through with your tax. All right. So the last step about define your goal, count your okay. options, right? Group your options, evaluate the options, and the final step, choose one of the options and act on that option, right? Okay. We decide this is the best option. Let's contact them and set up a meeting or let's ask them, let's send them an email, etc. Right. So those are the steps when you're creating a checklist, right? So define your goal, your necessity, identify your options, evaluate them, and then choose an act depending on what you're decided to do. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do, I'm going to give you guys seven or eight minutes. We're going to go into the breakout rooms. Vamos a entrar a las salas. Va a ser rápido, siete, ocho minutos. Van a crear una lista. Try to create a checklist. Similar to this one. Siguiendo estos pasos. Define your goal. Identify or mention the options, right? Okay, our goal is this. We have these many options and these are the name the options, right? We have evaluated each option. This one is good. This one is not so good. This one is better, etc. And we have decided that we're going to do this and okay. So I'm going it can be of any topic, it can be free topic, but try to follow the checklist. El tema es libre. Solo tienen que elaborar una lista para una checklist siguiendo esos pasos. Puede ser de cualquier cosa. Para rutina de entrenamiento, para dieta, para salud, cosas de trabajo, cualquier tema. Solo incorporen, creen una lista rapidito. Solo van a crear una lista siguiendo esos pasos. ¿okay? Tienen ocho minutos a partir de este momento, so you can go in. Pueden abrir, pueden entrar a las salas, ya están abiertas. Solo van a crear la lista, nada más. Okay, no es conversation, nada más.
Hello, ladies. Hello. Yeah. Teacher, can you... En español, ¿verdad? ¿No podría dar el link donde está la información? Ya se lo pasé en WhatsApp, en el grupo está. Ah, ahorita. Yes. <laughs> Okay, que no la... estamos en el pasado. <risa> estamos atentos. <risa>
okay in a world but remember it's not a big conversation nothing long you just have to read the list that you created with that right um let's see room number one Eduardo and Jose please miss uh, okay. sorry we was trying to create the the conversation but first of all and the first step we were creating an online store mm -hmm. we we wanted to be set close and okay. the second one we decided to create an app for deliver the product or optimizing the the way to sell to the customer okay. improving and using the the new technologies okay mm -hmm. and the number three optimizing all the social media to expand our brand e, and after that in the number four we find something really interesting and it was a SWOT so we was looking what it means SWOT and we were discussing about the SWOT and in this the times goes but uh, we were uh, talking about the thing so uh, Eduardo do you have something for add to add Eduardo You're in mute, <laughs> Sorry, sorry. I I completely sure that Jose Romero said because he, the online store is uh really famous around the world. So the only thing that you really need to do is just to be really creative mm -hmm. and also have a really great uh, store that you can only hire hiring a, a a really great person that can offer the products, maybe an influencer. Mm -hmm. and it will be success. You only have to 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 find what is the, the right product that the people really want to buy. Exactly. And it will be just using the 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 everything tools that Jose Romero said that really great website that the people feel comfortable and and yes, it's a really great publish publishing. All right. Very good. <laughs> yes, the word sweat calls our attention. Very good for the research. Jose Eduardo, good job working with the time. Now we have time for one more, and we have Jorge and Mauricio's uh, room. Let's hear the list that you created. Well, um, in our case, um, we talk about um, a specific um, uh, a specific goal for example uh, in this case we talk about the 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 race and uh, we we uh, talk about the first um topic or the first check that is define your goal is obviously win the race mm -hmm. yes and um the the second check is identify your option. In in this case, we uh, choose uh, our car for the competition. Choice between um, Toyota or BMW. What is the better? Uh, then evaluate your option and evaluate both brands the speed potential strong horses mm -hmm. and the last one uh, we need to choose uh, what is the better and in this case uh, we chose the BM, BWM because for us is better than Toyota all right very good well done with the checklist as well and this goes to show that i was telling you it's a free topic right you can decide the checklist you make it a business you make it a um different scenarios in room one and two completely different scenarios but the checklists were followed step one step two step three and the final decision right so very good job guys thank you for showing us okay thanks. okay so we're gonna take attendance for the last time tonight Friendly reminder, y lo voy a hacer en español, la plataforma. Eh, estaba revisando la plataforma en la mañana, um, ya estamos en la semana 3. Esta semana termina el día miércoles, digamos, la unidad 3. Así que tratemos de avanzar lo más posible en esas, las homeworks de la tarea de la semana 3. 
igual mañana y el miércoles lo vamos a estar haciendo juntos acá, así que, pero sí, los que tienen menos de 96 en sus tareas de la semana 1, retómenla, por favor, para que les pueda quedar en 96 como mínimo. Porque no les va a quedar en 100 porque hay una que tiene un glitch ahí, de las que estaban correctas, pero se las tomaba mal. Así que, porfa, los que tienen menos de 96 en la semana 1, retomen la tarea para que les puedan subir la, el porcentaje. O igual, los que tienen 40 o 50 en cualquiera de sus tareas, tomenlas de nuevo, vuelvan a enviar para que les suba el porcentaje. ¿okay? Vamos a pasar a asistencia por el last time tonight. Carlos Vladimir Rodríguez. Dairo Jonathan Fuente. Eduardo Antonio Magaña. Me, I, I would like to ask you something that mm -hmm. after the, the, the class, okay? okay? Emerson Ulises Monroy. Present, Miss. Thank you. Fatima Gabriela Loza. Present, Jonathan, Miss. Thank you. Jonathan Jose González. Present, Miss. Thank you. Jorge Antonio Sánchez. Present, teacher. Thank you. Jose Bernardo López. Present. Thank you. Jose Carlos Argueta. Present, Miss. Thank you, Jose Cesar Lemos. Present, teacher. Thank you, Juan Carlos Herrera. Present. Juan Jose Herrera. Present, teacher. Thank you, thank you. Carla Sofía Argueta. Present. Thank you, Kenia Elizabeth Rodríguez. Mauricio Antonio Velázquez. Present, teacher. Thank you, Mayra Cecilia Peña. Present. Thank you, Nelly Lilibet Andrade. Sandra Abigail Bonilla. Y Wendy Maricela Ramírez. Okay, you can all go to sleep, get some research, research your batteries, get some rest. I hope you have a great day tomorrow and I will see you at night. Have a good night, everyone. Bye, me. Bye. Take care, everyone. See you tomorrow. Dígame, Eduardo. Está en mute, Eduardo. No lo escucho. <laughs> I was <laughs> okay. I had a, a serious problem in grammar, so I would like to ask you what it can I find this? I am writing right. Sorry. Okay. For annoying, but no don't I worry. Am, I am That's really, what we're here for. I really need the English. <laughs> <laughs> okay, looking for, um, in this case, and I would like to know how 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 is the name of that of that when I use I should start looking, or I can say I sh I should start to look for a new job. No, I should start looking. For what a new is the name? It's a gerund. Gerund. Looking, it's acting as a gerund. Mm -hmm. I, I, I am. I am start look. I am start to looking. No, no se puede. No puedes combinar el verbo to be con progresivos, a menos que esté hablando en presente progresivo. El único escenario. Pero como acá usted está pidiendo la opinión, no se puede uh -huh. pedir una, una opinión en progresivo. Entonces, esta palabra, start looking, uh -huh. está, el looking tiene el ING porque está actuando como un gerundio, no porque esté actuando como un progresivo. Es un gerundio. Uh -huh. uh -huh. solo, solo puedo buscar información como gerundio y me va a salir. Sí, los gerundios son exactamente eso. Eh, hay escenarios donde usted no puede poner un, una preposición tú, por ejemplo, porque hay un auxiliary. En este caso, si uh -huh. tiene el auxiliary should, no uh -huh. puede poner un, la preposición tú después del auxiliar. No se puede, no existe eso. Entonces, sí. por eso ocupa el verbo en su forma infinitiva y un gerundio. Ajá, vaya, y otra cosa. Si yo no tuviera la palabra should, uh -huh. I start to look for a new job. Yo comienzo a buscar un nuevo trabajo. O tengo que decir, I start looking. Lo que pasa es que no. depende. Si es pregunta, no uh -huh. la puede cambiar. Así como está, está bien. Porque le está pidiendo la opinión a alguien más, ¿verdad? Uh -huh. 
Le está preguntando, do you think I should start looking? O lo otro uh -huh. que puede hacer, si no quiere usar un gerundio, le puede uh -huh. decir, do you think I should look for a new job? Uh -huh. Y el start. Uh -huh. Solo, do you think I should look for another job? Ok, es, es, que, es que esto siempre me ha confundido y no, no sé por qué. Uh -huh. Pero y sí, se tiene las dos opciones. Es, pero está bien. Uh -huh. Los ah, gerunds uh -huh. gerund son cuando hay ocasiones en que no se puede usar la preposición tú más el infinitivo, entonces hay un gerund. No quiere decir que se esté hablando en tiempo progresivo, aunque lleven en el. Uh -huh. okay. uh -huh. Pero a la hora de interpretarlos o traducir, se traducen como un verbo infinitivo normal. Sí, que eso me llamó la atención porque yo hubiera dicho, I should start to look for a new... <risa> Sí, ahí lo puede hacer. Después o... del start, sí puede. Start to uh -huh. look for a new job, está bien. Pero uh -huh. hay una diferencia. Es lo que yo decía al principio, Eduardo. Está el inglés. Hablar inglés y hablarlo como que si sí, yo lo he aprendido o hablar inglés lo más cercano a nativo posible native uh -huh. speaker native speaker le va a decir así como se lo puso ahí do you think I should start looking for a job uh -huh. alguien que no es native speaker que es como quizás nivel básico preguntaría así do you think I should start to look for a new job right entonces los dos están bien siempre, pero siempre le va a entender va pero uh -huh. sí. ¿Usted se va a ver como más básico o se puede ver como más negro? Ella es opcional. Las dos están bien, realmente. Solo uh -huh. lo que no se puede es poner el tú después de should. Eso sí no. Sí, eso sí no. Uh -huh. sí. Yes. Bueno. Uh -huh. Gracias, entonces yo no le quito. Uh -huh. podemos, re podemos también repasar ese tema. Mañana o pasado lo podemos incorporar. Así como ahora refrescamos el de could, would, should. Yo la, la uh -huh. otra que me confunde es también la de, la de cuando usar for y tú, okay. porque yo estaba buscando videos y también decía que cuando era de, digamos que un destinatario para alguien era tú uh -huh. For, y entonces quiero no, siento yo que confunde también ¿no? sí, porque, porque por ejemplo ocupa, hay gente que ocupa for para decir el por qué o para qué de las cosas cuando uh -huh. tendría que ser tú podemos repasarlo también, de hecho justo estaba buscando temas que reforzarles a ustedes Así que está muy bien eso, ¿no? podemos hacer germs, versus infinitives y la preposición es to and for de sí, la porque, semana. Llama, uh -huh. quiz, quiz aquí, no sé cómo se dice, pero igual siempre es como a veces los ejemplos son muy básicos o cosas así, entonces uno siempre termina confundiendo. Uh -huh. Ok, vamos a incorporarlo entonces en los repasos. Thank you for letting me know que se necesita ese refuerzo. Gracias, gracias a usted por el tiempo. Okay. Y, y... A la, no, a la orden, yo con gusto. Cuídese, luego mañana entonces. Yes. Good night.